Brother Buck by me. Brother Jason, would you pray? Ask the Lord to bless the remainder of the service, please, sir. Lord, we come to you now with a thankful heart. Lord, we come now and just praise you. What you're fixing to do during this, uh, through this service, Lord. We just uh, pray for the reading of his word. And Lord, just, we just pray that you give uh, David the words that we need to hear. Then Lord, just bless him in a mighty way. And Lord, just give him the words that we need to hear so like we can apply it to everyday lives. And Lord, help us to learn something from this scripture, dear Lord. Uh, so we can be better Christians for thee and better examples to you for the Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. John chapter number 14, as we're well aware, is talking about the way to heaven. There at the big, for, through verses 1 through 5, he talks about heaven, he talks about mansions, he talks about all the, the goodness and the wonders of heaven and how wonderful heaven's going to be. Then he makes that statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, is what Jesus Christ said. When he's saying, I am the way, and I agree with this 100%, so I'm giving you a two-point message right here. Uh, it's going to be two messages in one. I want to give a message to the laws first as I'm preaching in the context of the Scripture that that was written, I am the way. There is no other way to heaven. You can't get to heaven by tithing. You can't get to heaven by coming to Webb Chapel Baptist Church for 50 years. You can't get to heaven by being a good person. You can't get to heaven by praying to Buddha. You can't get to heaven by praying to Allah. You can't get to heaven by having a rosary bead and praying to Mary. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through the bloodshed sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross Amen. of Calvary. There is no other way. Jesus made it clear. Right. I am the way. So right. if you're lost here today, Amen. you can try to be as good as you want to be. It's not going to work. You can turn over leaf after leaf after leaf. Every time you're going to get dead worms. Every time you're going to get dirt. Every time you're going to get nastiness and moisture. Until you turn to Jesus Christ. Then and only then is He the way that will clean up your life. And give you exactly what you need to fill that void that's in your heart this morning. He said, I am the way. So in the context of that scripture, He's saying, I'm the only way to heaven. Now we're saved. That's your message if you lost here this morning. That's what I've come to tell you. Now I'm preaching to the church again. It'll be a little sweeter in here this morning than it was last week. Amen. It's already been sweeter in here. I feel the Lord's presence. He said, I am the way. You do realize as a Christian, it's not your way or the highway. It's His way or no way. Amen. Right. We don't get our way. Amen. We don't get what we want. That's Oftentimes right. we get in this selfish way and we say, it's about me. I and me and me and me and my life. Right. When God says no, the day you got saved, you gave your life to me. That's right. Amen. It's not about me and what I want. It's not about you and what you want. It's about what God wants. He said, I am the way. Let me ask you something this morning. Is He your way? Right. Is He your way? Or are you your way? Or are you standing in His way? Right. What you going to do this morning? You going to let God do what God wants to do here at Webb Chapel Baptist Church? Or are you going to keep standing in His way? Right. He said, I am the way. Amen. It's not my way or the highway. I've told you that a million times. Right. It's Jesus Christ and His way as we try to follow the Lord. Amen. What you going to do this morning? Turn over to Exodus chapter number 13. In this life, that we live. Sometimes things get hard. Sometimes things get tough. Sometimes the way is just not the way that we want it to be. But that's the way that it is. Right. That's why I'm glad Jesus Christ is the way this morning. <coughs> Turn over to verse number 20. If you're in the wilderness this morning, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you out of that wilderness, amen. <coughs> I can't do nothing for you if you're in the wilderness this morning. If you're dried up and you ain't got no shout left and you don't feel like crying to the Lord, you don't feel like giving Him praise, there's absolutely nothing that I can do to help you this morning. But I know Jesus is right. the way. He will help you this morning if you'll put it in His hands. Right. Amen. Notice where the Israelites are. They've already been freed from bondage. They've been freed from Pharaoh and now they're getting ready to go to where the Red Sea's getting ready to cross. But... They've got to go through the wilderness. You didn't realize that, did you? They went through the wilderness twice. We've got this idea that they spent the wilderness after the Red Sea crossing, and that's true. Forty years they spent in the wilderness after the crossing of the Red Sea. But they were in the wilderness on the way to the Red Sea. 
Mm -hmm. Oh my, how many ups and downs. I saw this video. Man, the Lord just giving stuff and giving stuff. All morning long, he's been putting stuff in my head. Mm -hmm. I love the Lord. He's so good. I love his word. Amen. I saw this video on Facebook. I should have shared it. This guy was climbing up these, these stairs, and it was talking about life. <laughs> and there, uh, beside these stairs, this, there's this big old trampoline. I wish I had it here. I would do it for you. As he's climbing up the stairs, one by one, he falls down and falls on that trampoline. And as he falls down, the trampoline bounces him back, back up, up to the stairs. Yep. And then he continues to walk up the stairs and he falls off. And the trampoline bounces him back up to the stairs. And then he gets up to the very tippy top and he falls off. And he tries to get back to the top, but he can't. And he continues to bounce lower and lower and lower until it's like there's no way back up on top of the mountain. Seems like there's no way back. And all of a sudden, he starts jumping harder. He starts riding right, harder. Amen. He starts to yes. pick on that trampoline to bounce him back up. And he bounces all the way back up and stands up to the top. Right. When it seems like there is no amen. way. When it seems like there's absolutely nothing you can do. Right. Go ahead and depend on the Lord. Yes. He'll take amen. care of you. He'll put you yes. back up on the mountaintop. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at where the Israelites were at. That wasn't in my notes, y'all. I'm just following the Lord. Amen. He's good this morning. Oh, if you don't feel him, you need to get saved. Right. Verse number 20. And they took their journey from Sakoth and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. Oh my, some of you are in there, but there's some of you <laughs> right on the edge of that wilderness. Right. And you're scared for your life. Amen. Over there in John chapter number 14, what Jesus say? I am the way. That means he's the way through the wilderness. Amen. Sure. Hey, he put the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. Who was in charge of that? God was. Every single bit and piece of their life as they're traveling through this wilderness, God was the one that put them there. Oftentimes we think, oh, this is so miserable. And you're right. Sometimes life stinks. Yeah. When you get down in the, in the moly grunt, life stinks. You get to looking at yourself and looking at the shape that you're in. I notice the older that I get, the more life stinks. The bolder I get, the fatter I get, the hairier I get, the, except on my head, I, I just ugly, can't help it. Hey, but you know what? God's brought me to this point in my life. He's the way, amen. And and when I look in the mirror at me, all I see is just clay, just dirt, just nothing. That's all we are. Right. But yet we think our way is the right way. That's right, yeah. When Jesus Christ said, amen. I am the way. Amen. Hey, we can do nothing without Christ. That's help. right. The Israelites only made it through the wilderness because of him. Yep. You do realize he fed them quail. Hey, I've heard somebody tell me the other day, they said that that's the best meat you can eat. And I thought that's because it's manna from heaven, literally. Right. <laughs> that's what God gave them in the wilderness. In the wilderness was quail meat, and they complained about that. And they said they wanted something else, eating quail meat. And then you want to complain, saying, "I want a bologna sandwich." How much sense does that make? It don't make no sense at all. But yet we do it every single day. God supplies our every single need in this way of life as we're going because He is the way, the only way. He's the only supplier of life. He's the only supplier of food. And, and yet we complain about what He gives us. Right. Why do we do that? Because we're human. You can't mm -hmm. help it. Every one of us. And because Satan tempts us every single day to do the complaining and the whining and mm -hmm. the crying. That's exactly what Satan does. As Brother Chris already said in Sunday school, as the Lord's already lined everything up, the reason why that happens, the devil wants to destroy this place. Right. That's yeah. why it gets in your head. That's yeah. why you're depressed. Because you've been thinking all week long about things that you didn't really have no business thinking. Mm -hmm. But it's because the Lord put it, not the Lord, the devil put it in your head. And the Lord wants you to get rid of it. Knock that thing out of your ear, amen. Whatever it is that the Lord's been bugging you with, <coughs> not the Lord, but Satan's been bugging you with, get it out. But you're in the, right there at the edge of the wilderness. Right there at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and by night. Can I tell you tonight, as they travel through this wilderness, they had to get through it in order to get to the Red Sea crossing. They had to. And there's no other way around it. Okay? They had to. And you get ready to find that out. If you look with me at verse number, verse number 3. God planned for them to be on the edge of the wilderness. Verse number 3 of chapter 14, the next chapter over. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness hath shut them in. You know why God led them through the wilderness? Because Satan's plan, Pharaoh's plan, 
didn't think they'd make it through. Right. Yeah. Satan's got you in the wilderness because God's placed you there. But Satan is constantly bickering with you and constantly fighting with you and constantly nagging you, trying to get you to think negative about the wilderness when God put you there. If God put you there and He's leading you by a pillar of cloud and by day and a pillar of fire by night, don't you think God can take care of us just like He did the Israelites while we're in the middle of our wilderness? Man, I love the Lord. It's so Amen. sweet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for helping me this morning. God can make a way out of no way. Amen. He is the way. That's what He said. Is He the way in your life? If He is the way, number one, He'll be your guide. As He guided the Israelites by a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire. That's a miracle in itself. We talk about quail meat being a miracle and bread falling from heaven and all that. And that's good stuff. Amen. But when you just think about a cloud, I think just one cloud in the sky that's leading these guys in the direction that they need to go to get to the Red Sea. To me, that's a miracle in itself. I'd rather see that than eat quail meat. I'd rather have seen the Lord just come down in a cloud and just guide me all the way where I need to go. Exactly where I follow that cloud. It'd make it real easy, wouldn't it? We don't have it that easy. We got the Holy Ghost and He guides and directs us through His Word. When we don't get in the Word... We don't, when, we, when they didn't look at the cloud, I'm sure they didn't know which direction to go. But you don't look at the cloud, the Word of God, listen to the Holy Ghost, you're not going to know what direction to go. But then by night, can, the cloud, okay, I guess that, that, that's cool, you know. See clouds all the time. You even see that in cartoons. I think of old Eeyore off of Winnie the Pooh. He always had a dark cloud over him. But the real miracle was at night. There's a pillar of fire floating around in the sky. Now that's something to see. I've seen clouds, but seeing fire floating in the sky, that's amazing to me. That's a miracle. That's exactly the way that God does in our life. If you just get in the fire of the Word of God, amen, and follow it, the Lord can continue to do what the Lord wants to do. Right. He amen. is the way. They sat in the edge of the wilderness. I think about our country. Y'all, we ain't going to get out by 12. I'll go ahead and tell you that. So put your seatbelts on. If you're hungry, go to the buffet after we're done. We're not going to get out at 12. The Lord's moving. I ain't quitting. Amen. 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 Right. But they're on the edge of the wilderness. Where was I going with that before I said that? I don't even know why I said that. I knew it would throw me off. I got it. <clears throat> Think about our country being on the edge of a wilderness. Being on the edge of going down or going up. Can I tell you, in 2024, it doesn't matter who runs for president. Amen. It doesn't matter who the president is right now. Because Jesus is the way. Right. Amen. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't matter what way your life's going. It doesn't matter how far deep in the wilderness you are, whether you're on the edge or whether you're getting ready to fall right in it. Jesus is the way. Yeah. And He'll take care of you just like He did them. He'll do exactly what He's promised. He's give you 66 books to prove that. He will take yeah. care of Webb's Chapel Baptist Church. You just got to follow His lead. Amen. Amen. He will take care of you in your life. You've got to follow the way that He has for you. But I'm glad that the Lord goes before us in every situation. They're here. And the Bible says that he went before him in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire by night. Then you think about what we talked about a couple of weeks ago when the disciples were on the raging sea and there was a storm raging and the boat was about to flip over and it seemed like every which way they went there was nothing but, but heartache, nothing but pain. You're worried about drowning to death and worried about falling in the sea. And all of a sudden you see Jesus Christ already ahead of you where he wants you to be at, walking on the water. That's what I'm talking about. Jesus, he'll go before us. He has. He is the way. We've got to follow Him, though. We've got to follow Him. He's already there where He wants us to be at. I'm thankful for that. He'd go out before you and lead the way if you'll follow Him. A good guide will always lead the way. I'm glad Jesus Christ is guiding my life. But there comes a point in time where you've got to let Him guide you. You cannot guide this ship of your life on your own. You've got to let Him do it. If He's not leading, who is? You are. And if you're not following his lead, whose lead are you following? There's only two that you can follow, spiritually speaking. <coughs> him or Satan. Right. If God doesn't have a will in your life, there you go. All right. Who are you going to follow? Who's the way this morning? I think of a good guide anytime you're going down a, a, a stream or anytime you're going down a, 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 a pathway or, or, or through the wilderness or there may be trees all around. Might be snakes dangling from the trees. I think back when we had our cave for the for the uh, vacation Bible school, we needed a guide to get through there, didn't we? Somebody, Jason, you needed a guide to get through there. You couldn't do it on your own. You tried and tried and tried and messed up every single night. Finally, you got it right. 
you realize that Jesus Christ was the guide, amen? Yep. But a good guide will knock the brush out of the way so that you can keep going. A good guide will go before you. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ does. He goes before us and knocks the things out of the way. Oftentimes we're worried about those things. Oh, there's snakes out there. Oh, they're going to eat us up. There's bears, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. But you know what? He took care of the lions for Daniel. He took care of the lion for David. He took care of the lion for Samson. Hey, he's going to take care of the lion. He took care of the bears, amen, for David. He took care of, 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 of the tigers. He'll take care of every problem you think of. If you take your hands off of it and just let the Lord do it, he'll do it. But we've got to let him lead. We've got to get our hands out of it. That's the problem. We want our hands in it. Me included. I'm just as guilty. But a good guy will do that for you so that you don't have to do it. And that's all you got to do is just follow. Just follow. Quit worrying about what the guide's trying to get out of the way and just follow the guide. That's your job. Follow the guide. Amen. He'll knock the brush out of the way. A good guide will bring and make sure that you have the essentials to life. A good guide will bring plenty of water. A good guide will bring plenty of, of crackers, saltine crackers. A good guide will bring plenty of peanut butter to put on the crackers. I mean, who wants just regular? I do, but most people like a little something on the saltine crackers. You know, God said he'll supply the crackers, but I'm glad when he supplies the peanut butter too, amen? That makes the crackers a little bit sweeter. And anytime God does it, he does it right, and he'll make it right, amen? We've just got to follow him in his way and the way that he wants us to go. Number one, I said, Jesus Christ is the way. If he's the way, number one, he'll be your guide. Number two, if he's the way, he'll be your goal. He'll be your goal. A good, uh, a good person that follows on a camping trip or something like that, you've got to have a goal. You don't just go on a hike and not have a goal set. Me and Rose, we went one time to Chimney Rock. We had a couple different options. We could have went up the big long path and got all the way up to the top where the flag is. And we could have looked out at all the beautiful scenery. That would have been our goal. Or we could have set the next one where you, you just go up about halfway and, and that's the end of it. Or you got a, a, the, my favorite one, which was the easiest one. You got the waterfall at the end. I said, man, that's going to be beautiful. That was our goal. We're going to make it to the waterfall. We're going to make it to the waterfall. And you know what? Eventually after everybody coming down the mountain looking at us like, y'all, what's wrong with it? We're fat. Can't you see this? Can't you see this? We can't breathe. We're trying to get up this mountain. They, they wouldn't let us up the elevator. They said we was too young. There wasn't nothing wrong with us. So they made us walk up the mountain. And God says the same thing. He says, you're not going to take the easy way out. You're going to take my way. You're going to follow me. Or you're just going to fail. It's exactly the way that God does it. And when you fail, you're going to have to retake the course again. And you're going to have to try to climb the mountain again. That's why so many people just... They don't never get to the mountaintop because they keep falling off because they just keep quitting. Don't quit. <laughs> don't give up. <coughs> but finally, we get up to that waterfall, and that thing was gorgeous and beautiful. I got underneath it. I had on my Trump 2020 shirt, and I was, I, whatever, yeah, I think it was, yeah, whatever it was, I had on a Trump shirt, and everybody was looking at me like I was crazy. And I got underneath that waterfall, and I just let that water fall down. I wish I had it right now because I'm sweating like crazy. Let that water just fall down on my back. It felt so good. Looking out at everybody else, just looking at me as I'm looking like a goofball under the waterfall. Hey, when I get to where God wants me, I want everything he's got. Amen? I'm going to go ahead and get in the water. I'm going to go ahead and take my shoes off and not worry about the snakes that could be out there. Amen? I'm going to go ahead and go on faith. And you know what? I got wet. I felt good. And no snakes bit me. There were snakes. People were finding them everywhere. But you know what? I didn't get bit. Because I wasn't playing with them and I was watching for them. You gotta watch out for the snakes. You don't pick them up. You pick them up, you go get bit. <laughs> but he will be your goal. Your goal should not be what you want. Your goal should be what God wants. Right. And his yeah. standard is always higher than your standard, yep. than my Amen. standard. My standard is, of course, the easiest trail there is. I want to get it done the easiest way possible. That way we ain't got to kill ourselves doing it. And God's way may not be the easiest way. God's way may be the hardest way around. You've got to follow it. He's your goal. He should set your goal. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. Y'all turn over there for me. Philippians chapter number 3. It's one of those small books you keep. 
Excuse me. Damn fine. Brother Chris, you there yet? Not yet. Ha, ah, you're slow. I win today. <laughs> <laughs> Philippians chapter number. We go to Bibles together and we always have a competition who can find the verse fastest. <laughs> With me. I said verse 14, but we're going to skip back to verse 13. Let me take this jacket off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going hard this morning. We're giving it all we got. Philippians chapter number 3. Look with me at verse number 13. This is Paul talking to the Philippian church. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. You know what we oftentimes do? God sets a goal for us. God's got a goal for Webb's Chapel Baptist Church. God's got a goal for you in your life. The problem is, you focus too much on what used to be. You focus too much on the way the goal used to be set. Right. Or the way the goal was, or this yeah. and that. Paul said, I'm not looking behind me. Right. Can That's I tell right. you, as I'm pastoring our church this morning... I'm not looking at the way my old church did things. Right. I'm not. Yeah. If you think I'm trying to be like my old church, you're crazy because I didn't like half the things my old pastor did. Okay? Right. I didn't. I'll be, I'm sorry, Preacher Mike. I love you, but that's the truth. I never told him that. I would never tell him that I disagreed with what right. he was doing. I just fell in line behind what he was trying to that's do. That's right. And I did it, whether yep. I liked it or not, because he's the Amen. one that's going to have to answer for what that's he does right. in the direction that the church goes. Yep. The church does not answer for what the church, the pastor does. That's right. Just like the, the wife does not answer for the home, the husband does. Amen. God has it set up that way. Yep. If this church fails, God's going to blame me, not right. you. Right. you got to do your part to help me not get blamed for what we're right. doing. you got to do your part as well. I can't do it on my own. Amen. Where was I going? Don't know. <laughs> I'm talking about goals. It's all good. The Holy Ghost is just moving through this place and helping me preach this morning. <laughs> Forgetting what was behind. i got to look back at my notes. That's why I have them. A lot of preachers preach without them and they'll just go all day long on a rabbit. I don't want to do that. I want to give you what the Lord's got. Shut up. Okay? Our goal is, should be what we're focused on. We should be focused on what God wants. Our goal. Not what we want. Not looking back, oh, the days of yonder when I was young and I was able to do great things for the Lord. Right. Those days are gone. Amen. They're just memories now. It's time to make some new ones. Yep. It's time to follow the direction that God has in your life. As a church, we look back and we say, oh, I remember how this pastor did things and I remember how that pastor did things and I remember this and I remember that. Those men are gone. Right. Amen. They followed God in yep. their time. Now it's my turn to follow the Lord. And it's your right. turn to follow in the direction that the Lord has set for us Amen. here at Webb's Chapel Baptist Church. Amen. That's right. Change is good. Go with the flow, my brothers right. and sisters. Mm -hmm. Like Amen. I told you Wednesday night, I ain't trying to get ahead of God. I want to follow God. Right. Amen. My goal is not to be way out here in left field where we're crazy. and That's not my goal. My goal is to be exactly where God wants us. At. Amen. And that's what every one of our goals should be is God. Yeah. God. Look into Him. Look into what He set for us. Forgetting the old things. He said, forget it. Forget it. It's not that way anymore. Get it out of your head. Get it right. out of your flesh. Because that's what's leading that. Yep. The flesh. Right. Amen. The flesh. Quit looking behind. Mm -hmm. In verse number 14. He's our goal now. Remember that. By the way, I can go ahead. Let me say this on verse number 13. Uh, don't look back at your past sins. Don't look back at what you used to be before you got saved. The devil will throw that stuff up in your head. He'll say, yep. hey, you remember how you used to be? That's not going to get you to the goal thinking about that. Amen. Yeah. Your sorrows in the past. April already said it. Thinking about what you've been through. and things. Hey, it's good every once in a while to look back at what you were. But when you do that too long, the devil might be able to throw some things in your mind. Right. And if you're wanting to go back to what you used to be. Yep. I've never understood how somebody can leave the goodness of God and go back to what he saved them from. But it is possible. Yeah. It is possible. Mm -hmm. No sorrows. You think of your sorrows and your trials and your tribulations. And it's good to think back on those things because you realize God brought you through every single one of them. Well, don't focus too much on the negatives. Oftentimes, we're too focused on the negative things that God has brought us out of. They think about the, the Israelites, think about the bondage. I believe there was one time when Jesus, the Jesus, God told the Pharaoh, God told Moses not to take them one way because if they went through the Philistine territory, then they would be in war and he would want, they would want to go back to bondage. 
God knows how much you can take. And God's not going to put too much on you that you can't bear. Through His strength. Let me not lie to you. God will put too much, so much on you that you can't bear it. But not without His strength. Right. If you do it in His strength, you'll make it through every single time. Then you've got verse number 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Pressing forward. We're not going backwards. No, that's not what we're doing. Mm -mm. You want to go backwards? You're in the wrong spot. Right. I'm trying to go forward for the Lord. Yep. Yep. Trying to go forward. Trying to follow His way because He is the way. Going forward toward the mark. If my mark is that door... And I had a couple of you stand in my way. I'd have to go through you to get to my goal. And you know what? I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to go through whoever I got to go through to get us to where we need to get to. Yep. So either you get in line with what God's trying to do here at Webb's Chapel Baptist Church, or we're going to go through you. Yep. I promise you, God will take you out if it's His will that He wants something done. Right. And you're fighting it. Amen. I love you with all of my heart, and I don't want to see that. God's already in the works. I said something, I'm not going to say it, but God's already in the works. Follow the goal that God has set for us. Amen. Right. Amen. Yep, that's right. Verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What's that high calling? That's winning souls. That's our number one goal. Yes. Amen. It's not to fellowship. It's not to eat dinner. It's not to have communion. Right. It's not to have business meetings. Yep. It's not to... Uh, have fun for fall festivals. Yep. Our number one goal here at Webb's Chapel Baptist Church, we're tre- pressing towards the mark of winning souls. That That's right. God. Amen. It's the one thing that every single one of us in here are called to do. Yep. You cannot deny that. Right. Every one of us. If God didn't want you to win souls, he'd have took you out after he saved you. Yep. Right. right. Yep. Pressing toward the high mark, the high calling. Looking forward. Number three, and I'm done. I said, number one, if Jesus is the way, he'll be your guide. Number two, he'll be your goal. You'll quit trying to do it your way and you'll do it his way and get to the point where he wants you to be, not where you want to be. Right. Where you're just satisfied and content, eased in Zion. Right. I'm happy with things just the way they are. I'm not. Mm-mm. God's not. Because we ain't won everybody to Christ yet. Right. And until we win everybody to Christ, I won't be satisfied. That's the way we ought to be. Amen. Right. Pressing toward the mark. Yep. You say, you ain't going to be able to win everybody to Christ. You're right, but I'm going to do the best that I can because that's what Jesus did. Right. That's what Paul did. That's what every disciple did. I'm going to do everything I can to get people to Jesus. No matter who I have to go through to do that, I'm going to do it. Number three, and I'm done. He'll be your glory. Hey, I'm not in this thing for self-glory. I could care less if you give me Reese cups or not. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. And I eat them. My wife fusses at me. But if you never brought me a Reese cup in here for Pastor Appreciation Month, I keep on doing exactly what I'm doing. Right. Yep. Sandra's not here, but if she had never bought me my little toy Corvette, <laughs> I still would be doing exactly what I'm doing. If y'all don't smile, if y'all don't amen me, if y'all don't jump up and run the aisles, I'm still going to do what God has called me to do. Yep. Amen. Whether you support it or not. Right. I'm going to keep on fighting. That's and right. I'm going to keep on going yep. because I know God's supporting me. Amen. And Amen. it's not about my glory and it's not about your glory. It's about His glory. Yep. Yep. It's all about Him. That's where we're at this morning. Yep. He is the way. I'm not the way. You're not the way. He's my goal. He's my guide. And all the glory belongs to Him. Amen. Amen. Everything we do here at Webb's Chapel Baptist Church, He ought to get the praise for it. Right. It ought not to be the singers in the choir getting the praise for everything that we do. He's the one that ought to get the glory. Choir, you did an awesome job. But you know what? I'm not here to praise you this morning. I'm here to praise Him. Every person that helped at the Fall Festival last weekend, you did an awesome job. But I'm not here to praise you. I'm here to praise Him. And I hope you didn't come in here praising your pastor like I've already told you a million times and put me on a pedestal because I'll fall right off. Amen. Yep. God. Yep. That's where it's at. So here's my, my thing for you. Get in his way or get out of his way because he is the way. Yep. Amen. Amen. Now stand up. I believe that's exactly what the Lord wanted us to have this morning.